Mike Phillips with AutoGeek.com. And with me here today is Dan McCool, the co-founder and president of the Dr. Color Chip Company. And today we're gonna to go over the tips, the tools, and the techniques to use the Dr. Color Chip commercial automotive paint chip repair system to show you step-by-step -step how to inspect a vehicle and then use the system to repair the chips. Dan, what's the first step? Mike, the first step that we have to do is assess the damage to the car. And so that's gonna involve a complete walk around of the vehicle. We'll start at the front, look at the hood, the bumper, and then we're gonna inspect the doors and go completely around the vehicle so that we have a, a full understanding of the extent of the chip damage and the amount of time that it's gonna take uh, to repair that damage, because it's, it's important. You don't wanna get yourself into a job that you're basically invoicing somebody for 65 bucks that's supposed to take you 20 minutes and it takes you an hour, hour and a half. You have to know and you have to become an expert at assessing the damage to the car. Of assess estimating, basically. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be able to quickly eyeball it, determine that that job's gonna take you 20 minutes and quote them a, a, a price that's fair, but it's gonna make you money. And then stick to it, stick to the Absolutely. 20 minutes. Okay, let's do it. Alrighty, we'll do the hood first. That's where most of your damage is. Um, I generally will bring a chamois with me to wipe this down to see the full extent of the damage, but I can tell just by looking, uh, there's probably a good 12 to 15 chips on the hood. Uh, there's also on the bumper uh, sporadic chips. Uh, so I know that right now, the hood and the bumper are probably gonna take me about 10 to 15 minutes, all right? So I'm gonna start walking down the side of the car. I'm, again, I'm just scanning these panels. You're not gonna get as, lot, uh, as much chip damage on the sides, uh, but I'm gonna try to pick up every chip I can. Uh, once you get to the doors, what you're gonna wanna do is open up the door, take your finger and kinda run it down the edge of the door. If there's a missing area of paint, you're gonna feel a rough area. If it's real smooth and visually you can't see anything, then that door's fine. And do that for each door. Quickly just slide your finger down. You're look, feeling for rough missing areas of paint. Again, if it's a smooth finish and you don't feel any missing paint, you're good. Walk right around to the back. Generally, you're gonna see some damage uh, to the back area. Again, kind of just be aware of it and continue walking around. Look at the gas cap and the perimeter. Go around the perimeter of the gas tank because usually you have a, a few chips around the perimeter. From open banging it. the nozzle around. Yeah, and, like and opening this up and check here too because sometimes in aggressively opening and closing and, and just bumping up against the cap to the gas tank itself, you might get some chips on that. Um, do the same thing for these doors. Open them up, run your finger down the edge, and you'll be able to feel and or see where chips might be. And then you do the same for the, uh, the front door. Also check the side view mirrors. If they're uh, painted. Yeah, uh, generally if they're painted the same color of the, uh, as the car, you're gonna find that there are some chips on the side view mirror. Okay, well this car, actually like I said, most of the damage is up front. So the next step after you've uh, ascertained the damage would be to? We're gonna have to clean the hood down now. We okay. gotta, let's get the hood cleaned up. That'll let us see a little bit better picture of what the scope of the damage is. Okay. And then we can pick the color of the paint. Okay, so let's, I got some marless wash over here. All righty. Let's go ahead and wipe the paint down. And the key with this is just, uh, is removing things like uh, bug splatter, rodent grime, built up dirt, so you can distinguish the difference between an actual chip and some kind of like bug dropping or bird dropping, or like I said, uh, right. tree sap mist, something like that. A lot of times a, a new user of the Dr. Color Chip system will not be able to uh, distinguish between a chip and maybe an abrasion or something that's on the surface of the clear coat that can actually be removed. So it's important, whether it's this type of car wash or whether it's a chamois, wipe down the hood. That'll give you a, a complete understanding of what kind of damage and what amount of damage we have that we're taking care of. Yeah, I'm gonna take a guess that by removing, I mean, we're removing all kinds of little dirt spots yeah. on here that maybe a new guy would think was a chip when it is actually just dirt on the surface. But by removing it also, when you're doing this for a customer, they won't come back and be confused by that dirt spot thinking you missed a chip because right. it really isn't. Right. Another thing that happens, oftentimes there might be something that doesn't immediately come off when you wash the panel. If you put paint on that and it's actually just something holding on to the clear coat, that spot will come through and shine through the paint. 
kind of is an indicator that it's not a chip. Sure. All right, so that's kind of one of the little tricks that you can use to determine whether or not what you're putting paint on is actually a chip and could even hold paint. Okay, Dan, so we got the front clip of this car clean, wiped it down with the waterless wash, and before we started, there were a lot of little spots here that could have looked like a paint chip, but now that we've cleaned it, those dots and those spots are gone, and now all we see are just nothing but paint chips. So you can focus right in on just what needs to be repaired so you don't waste any time. So what's the next step? The next step, Mike, is picking a color that's gonna match this shade of silver. Now this is a light silver, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple of the lighter silvers in the system, hold it up to the panel, and pick the one that I think best matches. Now in this case, I, I picked S201, a light silver. It doesn't correspond to any OEM particular color code, and that's not how our system works. That's what makes our system so simple and so good. You're just visually eyeballing a color. You could have used S202. So you're trying to get close. It's, yeah, and you still would have had excellent results. So you don't need to open the door or the glove box and look for paint codes. No. You don't need to do any mixing. You're, and to me, it's kind of overwhelming because I look inside this case and we got the other case over there. That's a lot of different paint colors. But in reality, this is a light silver. You got three or four light silvers. You're just trying to eyeball it up and get Correct. the one that's closest and then hedge your bet towards the one that's maybe a little bit lighter when working on light color colors. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. We're, the nice part about our system is you're not going to be mixing uh, colors every time you need to make a color uh, for a car. Uh, you're, these are reusable, so you're going to be able to do 30 cars with this one bottle of paint. Uh, and you're going to get familiar with it, too. You're going to see a shade like this, and you're going to know immediately, grab the S201. So it becomes a, a natural reflex. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's, okay, it's, it's, that makes sense. Once you, the more time you spend painting and touching up cars, uh, the quicker you're going to become at it, and the more money you're going to make. Okay, so once you've picked your color, okay, then what is the technique for working on hoods and bumpers and such. There's a couple techniques that I like to use that are used most commonly in the field. We have the dab and smear technique, which is what I'm going to demonstrate. And, and the tool first. you use for that? Uh, you're going to use a brush. Okay, you have, now you have multiple brushes. Is this the fine or the micro This is fine? the ultra brush. The ultra brush. Yeah, the fine and the ultra fine brushes, those are used for edges of panels where you can't come back with the seal act to remove the excess. Okay, so tiny, so, thin, Yeah, where you're leaving areas. behind finite amounts of paint and you're just letting it go. Okay, but All for right. the, the major rock chips, you're up right. here with the uh, Correct. The Ultra. When, when you're working on the flat of a panel, our normal dab and smear or the squeegee method is gonna work real well. Okay. All right, so I've chosen S201, and I'm gonna do the dab and smear method here. There's a couple ways you can smear the paint. You can smear it with the glove hand, the with side your thumb. of your thumb, okay. or you can just take the brush and actually kind of smooth it over and smear it over with the brush. I'll do a couple both ways just so that you get a, get a feel for it. Now what I like to do after I shake up the paint, I like the paint out of the cap. And I'm just smearing that paint across those chips with the brush. I didn't use the side of my thumb. Now there's other chips over here. I can drop paintlet to the side and smear it that way. And drop it next to it. Don't put it on the chip because if you then go to smear it, you're going to slide it right out of the paint chip. That's a very important so, tip. That's yeah. the, what I did the first time I used it. <laughs> My natural uh, way of thinking was to put it onto the chip itself. Right. And then when I smeared it, it pulled the paint right out of the yeah. chip. Yeah. So, so put we, it yeah. right in front of the chip and smear the paint into it. Correct. Great and tip. Now, now watch this. I'm just going to quickly go back and forth. Now I'm doing the same thing as smearing, only I'm smearing with the brush bristles. I'm going to do the same thing here. I personally think this is quicker when I was touching up cars at the dealerships, that's the way I would do it. Now on a bigger chip, you may have to put more paint down and then you could delicately use the side of your thumb and slide it over. All right, but uh, do that. Um, get all the chips that you see covered. Since the hood is clean, it's pretty obvious what is a, a chip on this car. And so I'm hitting all these little chips and I'm putting just a very small amount of paint on it, enough to cover. Now these chips had a kind of a black backing to it. You want to make sure that you have enough paint covering the chip so that backing doesn't come through and shine through the paint. Now here all I see is silver. I'm going to let that dry and once it's dry we can go to the next step. And, and this is probably important for everybody to learn also. 
How long do you let this touch-up paint dry before you use the C-Lact blending solution? You want it to be dry to the touch. Usually that's within a couple minutes. If okay. you're out in the sunny weather here in Florida, uh, it's going to be dry within a minute. Okay. Now is that something you can tactically feel, like touch it and you can tell that it's tacky? Or, sure. Or just sure. guess, or it becomes yeah. again like a reflex? What I will do is kind of rub my hand over here, and if you don't see paint sticking to your hand, it's pretty much dry. Okay. So this is pretty much ready to go. Another good little tip or technique there is the, Absolutely. the, the quick wiping test. Yeah. If you touch it and it's tacky or you get some uh, paint residue on your glove, just let it sit uh, for uh, another 30 seconds to a minute. And if you let it sit for 15, 20 minutes, an hour, it isn't going to hurt the car. Okay. And that's important too. You can always come back. The, I think the key here is, is you want to let it dry so it's set up enough that when you come back and wipe with the C-Lac blending solution, you don't wipe all the paint off. You Correct. want to wipe off the excess. You want to leave behind what's in the actual Correct. chip. And if you happen, if you rub too hard or if you're using your fingertips instead of the flat of your hand, uh, you could pull paint out of the chips. Just repeat the process. Yeah, it, it is a very delicate, soft gliding motion that you're using over the chip. It's not a digging pushing in with your fingertip motion. So if you do make a mistake, it's easy to recover. Absolutely. That's good. Yeah, very, very simple. Okay. Uh, that paint's dry. Now, what I will do second is show the squirt and squeegee method. Okay. And then we'll come back and remove this excess paint and do the final sealant step. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm so gonna use, this is the same shade silver in a squeegee bottle, or a squirt bottle, all right? The squirt and squeegee method is another nice, quick way to repair chips. There's some chips up here, so I'm just going to put a droplet of paint on there and squeegee it across. You see how flat that layer of paint is? Now this, to me, doesn't even look like that may not. I'm going to show you this because that may not even be a chip. No, that was a chip. If the paint, after squeegeeing it over, doesn't cover the chip, chances are that might be some residue on the panel because if it shines through the paint, uh, that is an indicator that maybe it isn't a chip. A tree sap or pollen or something okay. on there. I'm gonna... Now that's like a very soft, uh, like a surgical silicone blade. This is, is a is. yeah. This is a beveled edge, edge blade that we have custom made for the purpose of doing uh, these squeegee repairs. Now this is going to be a little tricky, but I'm going to show you this with a few droplets of paint, and I'm going to come over here. And we got pretty good coverage there. You can always do more. Another way you can apply it is just put a droplet on the squeegee itself. You probably have a little bit more control uh, of the paint that way. I see a chip there, so I'm just gonna squeegee over that one. Now, now when I watch you do this, and I think a touch-up paint repair, I'm always thinking that I need to keep the paint just right inside the chip itself. And what you're showing me looks really messy. You're getting paint all over the place, but that's what's unique about your system. Correct. It doesn't matter. You're right. going to wipe it off. You're right. only going to leave behind. And so that not that why, for one reason, you can actually go faster? Because you don't have to be so careful. Yeah, you don't have to be precise. So it's, our, our next step takes away all this excess paint and levels and smooth and seals the paint in the chipped areas. And, and so you're having a, a good looking repair that's easy to do. And, and fast. Yeah, and and fast. that's where the profit comes in. Yeah, absolutely. The more cars you can do every day, the more money you're going to make. There you go. You know, I, I, I uh, painted and touched up 20,000 cars in a six-year period, and I would do one car every 15 minutes. Wow, that's fast. You know, if you, got, you got to make sure you open the accounts, though. Now, if <laughs> we weren't there. filming this and you were just doing this on your own, how long would it take you to do this car? Uh, the whole car walking it, I'd spend between 10 and 15 minutes. From start to finish? From start to finish. That's fast. Uh, it is, but I mean, when you've done 20,000 cars, you get pretty fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it really doesn't take that long to get uh, become an expert. Yeah. You do a handful of cars, you pretty much have the process down, and then it's just a matter of going out there and doing cars. So it's a, it's a fairly flat learning curve as far as how to do this. I mean, you're making it look simple to start with. It is simple. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. you just demonstrated that. Yeah, it is simple. Now, that paint over there, because it was in a thin layer, is pretty much dry, so that's ready for the next step. Okay. And the next step is the blending solution. And it's the Sealac blending solution. There's a separation in this mixture. You're going to make sure that you shake that up real well. The consistency of the solution should be pink uh, before you put it onto the wiping cloth. Once so, so is that one of the reasons maybe you even put that in a, a clear or opaque bottle so 
you know, your end user can see, hey, I need to shake this, just a reminder? Yeah, it's a, it's a visual reminder because in 10 minutes this will have completely separated again. So if you set it down and you're working on a car, the next car you're working on, when you go to uh, apply the seal act, make sure you shake it. Sure. Okay. So once it's shook up, I'm going to take this wiping cloth and I'm going to put a liberal amount of the seal act on there. Okay, so tell me about the cloth. Is there anything that's about that cloth that's important for this part of the procedure? You want a lint-free cloth. Uh, you want something that's not abrasive, something that's not thick that will grab into the paint. Because if you have a really thick uh, towel, in some instances, it would pull the paint from the chip. Yeah. So, so, so the, flat, flat, the flat surface is important because it's going to tend to want to go over the divot or the chip and leave that paint behind and only remove the paint that's on the correct. surface. There's that and there's also, when I put this on here, note I'm using the flat at my hand. I'm not using the fingertips. That's important. If you use the fingertips, and again, right now what I'm doing is I'm going over these areas of dried paint and I'm letting the seal act activate the paint. By activating the paint, I mean it's softening the paint and it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for that to occur. And I continue to just lightly wipe, and as you do this, you can slowly begin to see the excess paint coming away. Now, if I push too hard, what will happen is the paint will come out of the chip and you'll have to do it over. So I'm lightly buffing, and I can slowly begin to see that excess paint coming off. Silver. A lot of people say silver's a difficult car to work on. Well, you know what? Our system works extremely well on silver cars, and you see a heck of a lot of them out there. So oh, yeah, it's you gotta, popular. You got to make sure you can do silver, uh, just as just as popular as it is black um, or red. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, there's there's a handful of colors that you're going to see out there a lot. Okay. Once you see that the excess paint is removed, just buff it. Now that those chips are repaired nicely. When you're three steps from this vehicle after you're done with these repairs, a customer walking by the car is not going to notice that these chips were there. So it's going to it's one it's one red flag eliminated. Yeah. So that's a, and that's the key to a successful repair is from three four feet away when you stand and look at the car, there's nothing that distracts your eyes. You see a uniform uh, silver hood in this case. You don't see a silver hood with dots everywhere where right. paint is missing. Right. Your typical touch up. Um, and the older touch-up methods out there would leave paint blobs. Yep. It looked like your car had the measles. Everybody and, hates paint blobs. And there are there is a way to remove paint blobs. Um, I carry a bottle of acetone around with me and Q-tips. If there's old paint blobs on the car, I dip the Q-tip in the acetone and I carefully go over the paint blobs and it'll slowly dissolve that paint away. And, and then it, I wipe it wet with the, either the seal act or water just to neutralize okay. it. And the thing about modern base coat clear coats is the acetone is actually safe. It won't dissolve the paint that came from the factory. It's just going to take out the touch-up paint. Correct. 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 Okay. Yeah. But yes. any, just a word of caution, acetone is a, a very strong solvent and it also can be very dangerous to you. So you always want to wear gloves when, anytime you're using acetone, even if you're going to use a Q-tip. It's right. just a good... It's just a good safety precaution to wear gloves. Yeah, I mean, working on cars with paint, you should be wearing gloves all the time. Yeah. And, you know, I recommend uh, eyewear as well. Uh, if you're working outdoors in the sun, you got reflection coming off the hood, it can be dangerous to the eyes. And I've been out there on days where I forgot my sunglasses, yeah. and you, you come home with bloodshot eyes. Silver is actually works like a mirror out in the sun. Oh, it's terrible. In, in fact, you know, in my world, the car detailing world, people <laughs> say, what's the best color if you don't want to learn how to polish paint? The answer is silver metallic, because if you try to look for swirls in the sun on silver metallic, you find yourself turning your head away because it hurts, because right. it's just like a mirror. It is, it is. And, uh, you know, working out here in Florida. Uh, lots of sun. Lots of sun, <laughs> and, and you better bring your water and Gatorade. But uh, those chips are coming out nicely. Yeah, and this this is actually so much easier than what uh, people used to do years ago when they thought about doing touch-up repair, which was to add a drop of touch-up paint to the actual rock chip, and then the idea being is that somehow you're going to be able to come back and maybe sand it flat, then remove your sanding marks. And if you're not careful, you know what happens because yeah. I, I know you've been there and done that, but you take a molehill and turn it into a mountain. Right. And this right. system completely eliminates that risk. Right. And people, expectation, Mike, we talked about this earlier, expectation is very key. Uh, this isn't a body shop in the bottle. Yeah. This is a touch-up system.
All right, this isn't a replacement for uh, you know body sprays, but there's going to be s times where previously, if you had 30 chips on a hood, you couldn't make it look new enough to warrant not having it sprayed. With our system, you're going to have many hoods that you previously probably would have sprayed. Now you don't have to, and it saves hundreds if not thousands of dollars depending on the type of vehicle that you're working on. And again, the paint you use in your system, that's a permanent fix. The quality is the same as OEM paint. Absolutely, and we, we make it with properties so that our paint works with our solutions, uh, and it will hold and dry much quicker than your typical paints, uh, and the, the paint also doesn't shrink. And you'll, what you'll see with some touch-up paints out there, the paint actually shrinks after it dries in the chip, and you can see the perimeter of the paint, and you actually see the exposed panel again. It's a sunken crater, basically, because yeah, yeah. it shrinks or dies back. Right. So this is nicely dried, and again, I squeegeed this chip down here. I could have done this car just with the brush. I didn't have to use the squeegee, but I would definitely wanted to show you that option because on heavily road rashed vehicles, I like to squeegee uh, big areas. And it just makes me go through them quicker. So it's, it's about speed. It's this about speed and you know, the, the repairs themselves are gonna be equally uh, equal to what we did with the dab and smear. Uh, it's just that uh, I was able to cover here just through a couple smears, about eight chips. Now, um, one thing I, th I think we should cover real quickly is um, when you have a chip and it's been exposed, now we clean this all up with the waterless wash. Yes. If, you have, if you find some chips that maybe they're dirtier, do you have something in your line to address that? Uh, we have a prep solution that's a, a degreasing agent, and that works nicely to clean the panel and the chips. You could also use rubbing alcohol. I've used that in the past. Uh, that does a decent job. If there's any wax or impurities left in the chips, uh, that does a nice job of uh, cleaning them and getting them ready for paint application. The key thing, just common sense, you want to work on a clean surface. Absolutely. Okay. With clean so, surface, it works great. We use the water swash. Uh, you have products, and the key thing is get the paint chipped area clean, and then the paint will stick. Absolutely. Yep. And okay. that's it. I mean, I we did this kind of slow and casual, and. It took us five minutes, and that's the that's whole hood. This is a $65 job in Florida, um, and I can do 20 of these in a day. Wow, so you can make some serious coin if you get good at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And you know, also what I want to point out is um, when I look at the, the, the CLAC uh, blending solution, to me, I'm thinking this is a solvent that's going to dissolve paint. But it's really a lot more complicated than that because when you get done wiping this down, it looks like you just put some wax on it. Mean, it restores the shine too. Correct. Yeah. It, it, ser it serves a dual purpose. Uh, it, there is a sealant in there uh, as, as, as a part of the, activa the activating agent that softens the paint. The sealant will keep the paint that's in the chips and cover that and seal it and allow it to cure properly. So it's a dual purpose to that, and it does, it gives it, it also enhances the shine of the Yeah, and then paint. you don't have to carry around another product, you're done. Right. What's the next step? The next step, go on to the next car. Okay, so <laughs> that's it, pretty simple. Yeah, it is simple. Yeah, All right. and uh, you know, one of the things I like about this system is it's also, it's not labor intensive. I mean, the hardest thing he's doing is wiping a, a microfiber towel over the paint. There's not a lot of labor involved here. It's mostly just uh, common sense. Evaluate where the defects are, clean the surface, apply the touch-up paint, wait for a minute or two, wipe it with the C-Lac blending solution, give it a final buff with the microfiber towel, you're done. Right, one, one last point, your brushes are reusable, just clean them in acetone and uh, make sure as you're using the paint bottles, make sure that you can put a little rim of, a little bit of Vaseline around the mouth of the jar so that the next time you go to use it, it isn't locked down shut uh, because if you let paint from the cap, get around the mouth of the jar, could lock down shut. So put a little Vaseline around the, uh, the rim of the jar and you should be fine the next time you go to use it. Okay, you know, everyone that's watching this right now, you're, you have either purchased the system or you're thinking about purchasing the system. If you've purchased it, we'd just like to say thank you. If you're thinking about, if you're thinking about purchasing the system, could, could you maybe just share what kind of market potential is out there? I mean, who would your customers be? As a commercial touch-up provider, you're going to be calling on car dealerships. You're also going to be serving the end user community because where do you go? Who do you call right now to get touch-up done? 
You can maybe call your dealer, but who's your dealer going to call? They're going to call us. Yeah. There's really not a company out there that goes around and does touch-up repairs. You might have companies that go out and do mobile resprays, but they don't have the touch-up repair system that we do. So we're really a unique business, uh, and there's great opportunity to market not only to the commercial users, but also to the end users. And uh, if you drive around your hometown, I think uh, it's pretty easy to see. There's a lot of dealerships. Uh, used car, used and new car dealerships. How about industries like uh, motorhome, motorcycles? Sure, sure. I mean, anything I, with paint that what most it's look good. Absolutely. I mean, if you market your product, uh, you can market it. I've done airplanes, I've done boats, I've done motorcycles, I've done RVs. Uh, you can touch up just about any vehicle out there um, because most of the panels are, are, are you know, done in the same fashion. S similar, Base coat, sure. clear coat. And, and our product and the fact that you have the flexibility within the system because you're not tied to OEM codes, no. you can do just about any color you want. Now, the complete commercial kit includes how many different paint colors? Uh, our full system is 160. 160 different 160 paint colors. paints. And that'll tackle anything out there. Pretty on the much market. any color out there. If, if you haven't come across a problem, likely no one else is going to come across <laughs> a problem. So, and then after they get the kit, uh, they can get refills. Yes, we have wholesale pricing for all of our commercial uh, system purchasers. Uh, they can buy gallons of the Seal Act, and they get wholesale pricing on the bo bottles of paint. And same thing for the uh, lint-free wipes and the brushes Everything, and the squeegees. Yeah. We try to offer all that stuff, uh, you know, because that's readily available in stores and stuff. You could go out and buy bulk quantity yourself if you wanted to. We we offer that as an extra service to our customers. Sure. You know, what we're concerned with is getting you the paint and getting you the seal act and, and the miscellaneous applicators. Yeah, well, one thing I think is impressive is it's a real professional-looking kit. I mean, the, the case it's in, the graphics that it comes with, everything is labeled and marked. Uh, when you show up on the job site, you're not going to look like some hokey guy that doesn't know what he's doing. You're going to show up and you're going to look like you have your system together and you're ready to do the job. Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. Well, Dan, uh, thank you so much for showing thank us you. just how easy this is. I appreciate and, uh, the time th and the opportunity. Yeah, I think the goal of this was to show that touch-up paint repair, uh, remove the confusion, remove the mystery of how your system works, show how fast it is, how easy it is, and of course, the best part, once you get this down, how profitable it is. Absolutely. If you have any questions at all, what should they do? Go to drcolorchip.com or call our office, uh, all the information's there, and speak to one of our marketing representatives and we can answer any questions. We offer a variety of different systems. The 160 color system is our big system, but we do offer custom systems for smaller users and for entry level type folks. Okay. Hey, you know, uh, we covered the, these two techniques you showed here, the dab and smear and with the squeegee. Those are the two that you would use the most often, say, on the front clip of a car. But, but for doing edges like door edges get chips, uh, other areas of the car, we have some other techniques to show, right? Yes, we do. We have micro brushes, both fine and super fine, that are used to do door edges and chips around the gas caps. and Common places. Uh, yeah. Any okay. place where the, you're on the leading edge of a panel, where if you came back with the seal act, you would be more likely to remove the seal act. So with those small fine tools, you can actually place a very finite amount of paint and just let it go. Okay, well I think we've got another car lined up to show that, so yep. tell you what, if we're done with this one, let's move on let's to the next on. car. Very good. Okay. Thank you.